the country? Hmm. Um, I, I will not be able to give you the number of migrants. That will probably come from the NIS, Nigeria Immigration Service, but we are trying to come up with that data uh, through the uh, subcommittee on the technical working group working on migration policy. But we have about 2,000 recognized refugees in Nigeria, about well, more than 1,000, slightly above 1,000 asylum seekers. But we have almost uh, 1.3 registered internally displaced persons in the country. And this number could be more because there are some that have not registered. What's the funding situation like? How do you get funds to address these uh, people? Because you've mentioned about uh, 1.3 million registered uh, displaced people in the country. And um, quite a number of uh, we have uh, 2,000 re registered refugees and 1,000 asylum seekers. So how do you get fund to manage this set of people? Unfortunately, um, the way the Refugee Commission was established, um, it was established in 1989. At the time the law was passed, it wasn't linked to any emergency funds. At the time, there was even no definition for IDP globally. So um, nobody envisaged that we'll be having these type of problems. But an amendment is in the, pro in the way, and uh, it's being processed. We hope it will be accelerated to enable the Refugee Commission uh, raised its own funds. We are really uh, facing tremendous challenges in terms of finance because we now depend on appropriation. Like, and like I said, because of the spontaneous nature of displacement, you won't be able to budget accurately. And even where you budget, you know, because of this envelope system of budgeting, you are being given money without considering your your, your responsibilities. Like last year, uh, the Refugee Commission was given 17 million for protection, care, and maintenance of over a million internal dis displaced persons. This year, this number, this budget has come down to 32 million to take care of over 2 million internally displaced persons. So we are constantly uh, struggling to see how we bring about partnerships, we bring about programs, just so that uh, we could um, face our responsibilities. Now, what should the actual figure be? Uh, and what is the shortfall that we're talking about in the budget of the National Refugee Commission in ensuring an effective management of refugee and internally displaced people in Nigeria? Well, uh, if you um, give Refugee Commission, if you give Refugee Commission certain amount of money, I could say less than one third of what it takes to take care of those camps as it is now. We'll be able to provide durable solutions to all of the IDPs and there will not be need for anybody to be displaced. We have been advocating for non-encampment. We have also been circulating to all relevant agencies or any donor that will come to us to say, look, we have relief items for IDPs to rather than give relief items, food items into the camps, why don't you look, take a look at our standard assistance package, which is uh, an assistance package that will now ensure that a family is resettled once and for all. And it doesn't really take much. It's, about, um, it's a package that will give six months rent, one year health insurance, it will give uh, a one-off cash handout. It will give food and non-food items to start a household. It will also give some kind of empowerment assistance or referral. And in le with less than 200,000, a family of five will be resettled, and they don't need to remain in the camp. Now, let's look at the plight of Nigerian migrants abroad now. Uh, we have records that um, we have about 60,000 Nigerian migrants abroad. What's the National Refugee Commission doing in addressing the plight of these migrants abroad? Well, it's a question of sovereignty and also the law. You are a refugee when you cross an international territory, so they are refugees in Niger. So it's the government of Niger that has the international obligation of taking care of them. But what we do is that we monitor 
we monitor the applied, and that the best thing for any government to do is to make it attractive for, for people to return. So once these people return, they, are, they will be our responsibility. And we hope that they will, they will come back. And, but pending that time, we do uh, have um, interest in seeing that while they are there, their stay is not entirely wasted because they are there for security reasons. For instance, I know um, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNSCR, approached us, you know, and also the Ministry of Education to see how they could facilitate our Nigerian students in Niger to be tutored in English and also for them to be able to sit for their JAM exam, GCE, which I think will be a tremendous help since now there is like an online, uh, online examination process. Let's be specific in addressing some of these issues now. Um, we, we've had uh, situations about uh, xenophobia in South Africa and quite a similar old style reactions also in countries like Libya and a few countries. What's Nigeria's standpoint in addressing the growing tide of these refugees and also the internally displaced people, especially the refugees now? Let's look at Nigeria's policy towards refugees. The protection of migrants' rights is a very prominent future. We also have the Nigerian constitution that uh, also prohibits discrimination. It did not say discrimination against Nigerians. It say any person. And uh, we have also ratified a number of instruments that, um, that uh, uh, prohibit um, discrimination, ratified and even domesticated some, like the Convention on Rights of the Child, for instance. So um, we, uh, you really uh, working very hard to see that um, we promote uh, protection of migrants' rights. We also participate as a country in global forum on migration, whereby you know countries come together and just give their views on what migration should be and how it should go. We have been there. There have been six of them, and we've been in each and every one of them. We have also started our own national migration dialogue in the country. We started the first one last year, and we hope to uh, carry out another one this year and even take it to the regions. It's, Im it's important to talk about it so that we know what is in there for us so we don't like, uh, become like South Africa or Libya. It's obvious that there is a rising tide of uh, refugees all over the world, and especially in Africa. So what can be done to curb this rising trend in this continent? Refugees all over the world. Globally, we have quite a number of uh, conflicts raging. It's very, very important um, for the world to come and address root causes of these conflicts. You know, poor governance should also be should looked into. We should really... Uh, as Africans also, as African countries, we concentrate on this peer review mechanism to ensure that, you know, we, you know, enshrine good governance in, in our dealings as Africans to make sure that we create opportunities for our people because, because if there are no opportunities, you find people desperately seeking for greener pastures. And also to be very tough on dictators, you know, oppressive regimes, and, uh, uh, you know, violators of, 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 of human rights because uh, whereas some are looking for greener pastures, others are running away because they have to. They have to because their rights are violated. Uh, this is Sani Kangi, where it's been nice having you in this episode of Question Time. Thank you very much indeed for coming. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And that's as much as we can take on this episode of Question Time. You may also send us your comments on our various social media platforms shown on your screen. Join us next week on another exciting episode of the show on Channels Television. Many thanks for watching. I'm Binga Ashiru saying goodbye.